Alright, um... Well, there's actually not that much left. Anyway, let's grab the rest of M3. Which I believe includes a suicide note? Yep, there it is. Oh god. Oh, look! It's tiny, too. It's... It's gonna be short. For some reason, a short suicide note is even more disturbing than a long one. I don't know why, but... <sighs> okay, um, what else, what else am I gonna grab? Three more. Something from M5? Oh yeah, yeah, let's get back to Kim So Yi. Moving in. Everything will be alright. Wasn't there one called Fired? Yeah, Fire, there we go. Okay, actually, that should end... That should sum up what happened with her. I think that's everything from her. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. Alright. Well, this is gonna be more reading about tragedy. Oh, God. Striking bad at society's betrayal. Suicide note. Uh, I will be his bride. Moving in. Everything will be alright. Fired. Okay. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna get it over with. Let's just let's just read the suicide note. Cause I'm just gonna be dreading it and putting it off. Alright. To my big sister, I'll always love you more than anything. Sorry about the trouble. I hope your life gets better with the useless parts of it cut out. You deserve to be happy. Lo- Jesus Christ. She's apologizing in her suicide note. I hope your life gets better with the useless parts of it cut out. It's so fucking sad. Jesus. I hope your life gets better with the useless parts of it cut out. Her big sister was the only one that she she had a intimate relationship with, and she looked up to her and deferred to her in everything. And her older sister older sister just treated her like crap. And she... She couldn't deal with it anymore. <sighs> That's so horrible. <sighs> I mean, she doesn't even... She d I don't even think she means this passive-aggressively. It's not like, fuck you. It's, it's, I don't think this is like a fuck you note. Do it doesn't seem like it. It seems like she genuinely thinks she's worthless, and she's crap, and she- and even... In the end, you deserve to be happy. Love. She- She just thinks she's completely worthless. And she signed it, Pyon Misun. Which is what that other person, someone else called her, and she said that's not my name. But she signed it, Pyon Misun. Why? <laughs> Who are the Pyons? 
Peon family originally, I guess. The relationship seems kind of unusual. Yeah, why did she sign it? Peon Misun. She didn't... She didn't feel like they were family anymore? Is that why she signed it? With her, her old name? Okay, well... Let me see if I can move on from that. Jesus. And read... Something else. Okay, what else do we have? 45, 45, 45, 43. Alright, let's go with this. Yeah, this is the oldest. Fired. What? Why? I know. What? God. This is gonna be more tragedy. Apart- <laughs> She's doing this again. Apartment status. No time to make the bed this morning. Joke's on me. Dishes need to be washed, and broken mixing bowl needs replacing. Floor needs to be swept. In retrospect, I suppose it was an inevitability. For the last month, I was the only woman in the department still left. Oh, Excluding custodial services and the like. Certainly the last with any sort of engineering qualifications at all. Most quit. My mother tells me that all of them are pregnant now. Oh, fucking Yana. She pushed, with the help of Ryu, this Motherhood Credit Act crap, and made everyone just become baby-making, husband-devoted machines. And then society went to shit. <laughs> I hate her so much. I didn't realize my position might be in peril. I assumed I would continue to work in engineering forever, even given the pay cuts, considering the possibility that I'm actually a naive idiot. Yesterday, I delivered my report on the radiation problem to the research chief. The entire presentation took an hour, covering most of the material in the 100-page report, and he seemed to find my conclusions both reasonable and useful. At least, he said as much, and he was taking notes the whole time. He seemed satisfied that I had proven the hypothesis, that increased levels of ambient radiation had a negative impact on fertility rates. I would like to extend this research further, I told him. I have reason to believe that not only could it hypothetically have an impact, but that the low birth rates on the Megungwas are related to ambient radiation being outside safe levels. I think understanding this could be the first step in addressing a serious problem. So, that really was the cause then, but if they knew back then, then why... Yeah, does this... Is this just gonna get buried? Her findings that could change everything for the ship? Well, hold off on the proposal for now, but I'll think about it. That's an interesting theory. I don't know if there's really room for funding that, but I do see the importance, he said to me. I do not understand why he did, because near the end of the day I got the message from him saying that I was fired effective the end of tomorrow. What the fuck? I feel as though I should have seen it coming. I suppose the friendliness was cowardice and an unwillingness to deliver the message to my face. I feel betrayed by his actions. On what grounds did he even fire her? Well, I guess he doesn't need grounds. While I was sitting there stunned, Han walked into my office. I glared at him. He told me that my replacement had yet to be decided and that he wanted me to put his name in as the most qualified. I glared at him more, speechless that he would suggest such a thing. What a piece of shit. He was supposed to be your colleague, but he did horrible things to Kim So-Yi. He did. Fucking slimeball. If you don't, I'll tell your husband that you... And then he make a, made a vulgar hand gesture towards his mouth. I was sickened. I was angry. My boss treating me as though I had no value was bad enough, but to be blackmailed by someone like Han was beyond reproach. I'm still angry thinking about it, actually. I wanted to tell him to leave me alone, that I never would. What I really wanted to, wanted to say was, fuck off. I tried. I was unable to work up the nerve. 
All I could do was log off my workstation for the last time and watch the image of Name Mun on the desk fade away. I did not want to see him again. I tried to storm out of the office, but he grabbed me by the arm. He said that he meant what he said in a threatening tone. I didn't care anymore. Do what you will, I choked out and yanked my arm away. I hurried out, not caring what people thought as I left the department looking upset. His threats were disgusting, but at that moment, I felt like they held no power. I had already lost my job, the most important thing to me. If I have no purpose, it is hard to be afraid. I feel stupid and naive for not realizing. The timing could not have been a coincidence, being fired right after, after delivering my last report. Maybe I should have held on to that report, stalled. Maybe I should have known how precarious my position was. I am an idiot. Late evening addendum to this diary entry. My husband was very nice and supportive when I delivered the news to him. I have one more day, but I do not think I'll go in, I said. Oh, hell no, of course not. Those bastards don't deserve that, he said, putting his hand on my shoulder. You're so tense. I mean, of course you are. I'm sorry, dear. Turn a bit. I'll give you a massage. I obliged, and he started to rub my shoulders. That's so nice of him. I really have, I'd really like to have someone like that. He does still sound like... He sounded like an amazing person before, and he still does. Ah, I said. It felt nice. Thank you. I didn't know what else to say. Can you ask your family for help? Maybe there's something they can do about your... Your old boss. I mean, he suggested. He was trying to be helpful, but it unfortunately was not. I don't think anyone's wanted to throw around much influence since a family lost the counselorship. There's complicated politics involved. I don't understand them, really, I told him. I'll ask my dad, but I'm very confident that it won't help. Oh, because the Counselor of Engineering became someone in the Han family. I get it. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I think I get it. That sucks, he said bluntly. I agreed with the, with the assessment. <laughs> I do not know what I'm going to do with my life now, I sighed and admitted. That job was everything, and, I'm a hardly qual and I am hardly qualified to do anything else. Everyone else is just settling down and having kids, but I trailed off. I did not want to offend him by suggesting I did not want to have kids with him. Which is not to say that I do, uh, but I am young, and I'm sure I'll change my mind in the future. Most people seem to, and I would not assume I am any different, but right now I cannot imagine it. Thankfully, he understood. No, no, of course not, honey. There's no rush. He said, hugging me tightly. Only when you're ready. What do you want to do now, dear? I mean... If you didn't have to worry about jobs or money or anything, what would you be doing? Well, my research is very important. I do not believe anybody else will conduct it, and I think the continued existence of the Magungwa society depends on dealing with the problem. But right now it's not even accepted that there is one, I said. I would continue working on it regardless. It is that important. Then you should keep doing it, if it's that important to you. You're a tough girl. I believe in you, he said to me. It means a lot to me that he says those things. I turned around, sat on his lap, and hugged him. Thank you for saying that. I do not know what I would do without you. He kissed me on the forehead, a gesture that I appreciated a great deal. You're right. I am tough. It's important work. I have to keep it at it, even without an official budget. The future of the ship is at stake. Well, I believe in you, sweetie, he said. I truly do not know what I would do without that man in my life. He does not really understand the importance of what I was talking about, I know. I have tried to explain without any success, but he is very kind and supports me regardless, and I have come to realize that is more important. If I was still single, alone, when I received news I was fired, I do not know what I would do. I would still be alone in my room, crying helplessly, I have no doubt. I would have no determination. It is only because of his words that I am convinced that I must persevere. She's so strong. I wish I was like her. She is. Wow, she is, she is really strong. I wish I was like her too. I'm not that strong. Yes, dear, I mean it. 
Even if I don't like you reading... <laughs> yes, dear, I mean it. Even if I don't like you reading over my shoulder while I'm writing this, he's doing this right now, I will certainly acknowledge that you are the greatest thing in my life, and that I am very happy to have married you. Oh, certainly. Feel free to squeeze me tighter, but right now I'm going to start transferring documents from work, such that I can start planning to continue my research on the radiation problem from home. <laughs> well, this is really sad, but at least there's some... There's some goodness in it. She's an awesome person, he's an awesome person. They're awesome together, they're an amazing couple. I just... God, I hope things worked out well for them. I think there's one more to read from Kim So-Yi, though, so I guess we might find out. I feel freshly inspired. I may, I may be a naive idiot, but I am determined, and I have confidence that I will be able to prove my case. Okay, I've got to follow that thread. Oh no, oh, that was only the f first one? Yeah, that was only the first one. There's two more. Okay, we're going to find out what happened. Alright, moving in. Oh, that's bad. Uh-oh, shit. Well, that doesn't sound good. Room status, I give up. I quit. The act of cleaning is a futile gesture against a human-generated form of entropy. And entropy, in entropy invariably wins in the end. My attempts to make order out of chaos have been futile. I give up. <laughs> Moving in has been completed. And not that it was a very long process. We only have two rooms now, and they're not very big. I wish we had moved in with my parents, instead. If only we had swallowed our pride sooner. But instead, my sister beat me to it. So now I am stuck living with my in-laws in their garishly decorated home. I do not wish, in, wish to mention it to my husband because... Uh, because I appreciate the economic circumstances that necessitated our move, and do not wish to seem ungrateful for the support they are providing by renting us the space. But I do not like my in-laws at all. My mother and father-in-law are old enough to be my grandparents. Which is fine. However, I find them to not be friendly. They are not rude, they simply do not speak to me, ever. My brother-in-law seems friendly and very spirited, but to me he never says anything and immediately excuses himself from any conversation I attempt to start. Why would people be afraid to talk to her? I don't understand. Neither do I. What the hell? Why? Why would they be afraid to talk to her? I do not understand why, and I wish I knew what it was that I have done to inspire such feelings in them. I find it very hurtful to be surrounded by people, uh, but have them willfully ignore me for reasons unknown. I stay in the bedroom as much as possible as a result. We have a computer screen next to our bed. Anyway, so it is sufficient to, for me to work from. If I bury myself in work, I could ignore those feelings. Thankfully, work continues at a good pace, again. It took much longer than anticipated, but I was finally able to use my old professor's equipment at Mugungwa University to perform tests on the Pale Bride's blood. The results are unsurprising and the proof is unequivocal. Ambient radiation on the Mugungwa truly is much higher than the standard baseline. The current levels are not normal and with minimal and with minimal massaging of the data, a linear a direct correlation with birth rates and ambient radiation extrapolated from current levels in the Pale Bride's blood can be demonstrated. So she was right. Yep. There's no doubt. Our society is being killed slowly by infertility caused by increased radiation levels. When my report is complete, I will certainly be able to present it, and I have no doubt it will be taken seriously. I merely have to get through this, finish all this work, and finally I will be able to get my life back on track. Ah, shit. Unfortunately, I'm thinking there's no way. I... We never heard anything about this. I, I think people are just going to ignore her. Because this never showed up. In anything we've read before. When we were aboard the Magungwa. I think her life's work is going to be ignored. Or maybe it got lost, I don't know. Alright, I think this is the last one. Please, please be good. Please be something good. Happy. Something happy. I, I need something happy. Everything will be alright. Room status? Dirty. <laughs> 
At long last, my final report has been completed. I had to get someone else to submit it for me, but finally my work is starting to pay off. I have an audience with the Counselor of Engineering to present the matter for his consideration. I was so happy to write the recommendation section. However, thinking about the future and how I could do work that was actually recognized as valuable and help safeguard the ship's future, it makes me feel as though I have a purpose once more. It is a feeling that I've forgotten over these past few years, but I would like to remember it again. My husband does not share my optimism. Things have been strained with us as of late. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. We have never been able to communicate under the best of circumstances, but even more now, I feel as though there is a wedge between us. When I told him about having a chance to prove myself and how I was looking forward to the future, he just seemed upset. I wanted him to be proud of me for making it this far, despite all the difficulties. I wanted him... I guess her optimism was wrong, though. Still, yeah. Yeah. I wanted him to be as supportive of me as he was from the start. I want to feel like I'm not doing this alone, I pleaded with him as we got ready for bed. What are you going to do if they ignore you after all that? What if they don't go through with what you want? What then? He asked me. He seemed disappointed. Have you even considered that possibility? It's unlikely. The, da the data is irrefutable and easy to understand. Radiation is unquestionably the cause of decreased fertility on the Mugungwa, I told him. I have confidence that no reasonable person would disregard my report. Why are they fighting? I thought he was good for her. Me too, yeah, why? What happened? Fine, I'm sure it is, I just... He trailed off. I don't care, I'm going to bed now. He turned his back on me. I don't care? What the fuck? She's working on her life's work. And he says, I don't care? That's horrible. Wait, I said, hurrying over to sit in front of him. What if I did make plans for the extremely unlikely event that things do not work out? Would that make you happy? Forget it, he said, annoyed. I mean it, I said. I do not want to be the cause of you being upset. I want things to be amicable between us again. I'm willing to make contingencies for things that I do not believe will occur if it is something that will make you happy. I don't know what the hell that means. You're going... You're doing that thing where you talk over my head, and I hate that, he scowled. I'm sorry, I said. If you want me to consider that things might not work out, I will consider it. Let's consider it. I don't think it'll happen, but there is no harm in considering it. What's the point? I'm sure you'll find some smart talking way around it in the end. Anyway, so you can just go back to your self-obsessed science project shit in the end. You always do, he said angrily. God, why is he being like this? <sighs> Please don't say that, I said, my voice quivering. Or qua quavering? Is quavering a word? I don't know. You're my husband. I love you more than anything. Please. Don't you stop taking me seriously, too. He looked away, and there was a long pause. I felt like crying, when just minutes before I was so happy. Eventually, he made eye contact with me. He seemed to be confused. Sorry, he said in a sheepish manner. Do you really mean that? You love me? Yes, of course, I stated. You've never said that to me before, he said. I was skeptical. Are you sure? I asked. I'm absolutely positive, he told me. I was sure he was wrong, but as he had just apologized to me, I saw no reason to worsen things by arguing. Well, I do, I said. I love you very much. Come here, you, he said, grabbing me, pulling me onto his lap, just like the old days. He hugged me, and I was unable, and I was unable to stop myself from crying at that moment. What's wrong? he asked. I'm happy, I told him. Oh, he said. Let's make fallback plans, I said, in case I'm unable to convince them. What would you like? He was quiet for a moment. I want to have kids, he said. Not just because it would help with the money. I just want to have kids. I want to have a girl, an adorable little girl, who will be smart and pretty and dedicated just like her mother. After that, maybe we can have a couple of boys. She'll have to learn to keep them in line, but I can teach her that, and you can teach her science. 
Oh, so he was just... I see. All right, I said. You promise? He asked. After all this is done, if your presentation doesn't lead to a job, you promise me you'll settle down and we'll try to have kids? I can make no promises with regards to gender, but I promise if my presentation is unsuccessful, I will give up and we will try to have kids, I said. It's so nice that they agreed on these things together. He's so nice. He is. He was a he was a total douchebag there for a minute, but okay, he's he's come back. It seemed to comfort him a great deal. I felt guilty and hoped that he did not have his hopes up. It is unlikely that the report will be ignored, so I will not be following through on that promise. In the future, maybe we will anyway. But it was a promise. Uh, but it was a promise that would not lead to anything, because I am certain that I will be very busy with work in the future. I hope it it does not disappoint him. I am happy now, though, and am and I am optimistic for the future. I have an audience that will lead to something being done about our society's greatest problem, and with the irrefutable and extensive proof I have compiled, I will be taken seriously again. In just a matter of days, I will be on track again. Wait, but that date is right before... Oh, I get it. Wait, the date's right before what? What? What is it right before? Wait, is that right? Wait a minute. Is that right before the reset? To year zero? Oh, um, I'll check, I'll check the dates. I'm also happy because after I promised that, he took me by the chin, smiled, and said to me, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm also going to kiss you now. I nodded. I'd like that, I told him. When he did, I'd never felt such relief in my life. I had my husband caring about me again, and I had a future. I had value and a purpose, and finally, it will not just be me repeating these things to myself. I have persevered for so long, and soon it will pay off in just a matter of days. I also enjoyed the kiss, aside from its symbolic meaning. It simply felt very nice. I could have melted in his arms, right there. I'm certain of it. Everything will be alright. I hope it was alright. I don't think her proposal went through at all. But god, I hope they had a happy life together. Alright, so um, let's check the date. March 6th, 40, uh, 45. March 6th, 45. Alright, let's look at all of them. I think I can do this. No, that no, that's unextracted. Um Hold on, let me search for the uh the death of mute. Oh fuck it was. That's what happened. That's why it never got through. That's why they ignored her. Because the reset happened right afterwards and everything was in chaos. Ah, oh, Jesus. Talk about bad timing. Wow. Okay. Alright, this is the oldest friend. It's from Yana. I will be his bride. Dear little sister, Misun, I spent the night with Ryu again. I know you never liked me doing that, but I would have rather spent the night with you instead if I could have. And that's being perfectly honest. I miss you deeply. When I said I dreamed of being absolved of my responsibilities, I didn't mean you. I didn't mean like what you did. I would have taken care of you. I always would have taken care of you no matter what. You're my little sister. It's every other responsibility that wears me down. It is the fate of the Magungwa sitting on my shoulders that I just can't bear. The tedium of keeping up appearance for the sake of people who don't understand. Damn that awful reactionary security AI mute. Her zeal to protect the establishment could well cause the downfall of what she thinks she's protecting. Alright, so this, yeah, this is right before she... Right before the death of mute. And I'm just tired. I'm so tired. Last night, I... I slipped. 
I screwed up. Even monkeys fall from trees, I suppose. I was just so desperately starved for contact. Ryu was there for me, and I didn't have the willpower to turn him down this time. I just felt like this time I didn't want to be the one in control. I wanted to let him do whatever he pleased. And let him do the worrying. As for worrying, I'm just so tired of it. I'm just so tired. So this time, when he started to kiss me, when his hands started to wander, I didn't resist. I just sat there on his lap as he undressed me, murmuring enough every so often to encourage him. I won't lie, feeling his strong hands on my naked body, his clumsy gropes of my chest, felt so, so good. It's not even the physical sensation, it's just the feeling of being wanted, the feeling of being appreciated. For me to just sit there and be exposed, to not defend myself, to be desired instead of misunderstood, it felt perfect. All I had to worry about was him, and it was perfect. The sex itself, after six years of anticipation, was clumsy and inept. I had to fake my own orgasm and discreetly got myself off while I knelt in front of him. But still, clumsy as it was, to have him inside me was everything I dreamed it would be. I would even go so far as to say that it made me feel like a proper woman. In that moment, I was able to forget about everything and was able to live in a world that had nothing but him in it. That made me feel the closest thing to good inside since you left. With that, I lost the power. I held over him, by him believing me to be a virgin, and I don't know how much longer now I will be valuable in his eyes. It will almost certainly be mere months before the novelty of being able to have sex with me wears off, and I become used goods to him. But to be perfectly honest, I actually felt a little bit relieved to have given that up. To know what it felt like to be truly powerless in his arms when we finally fell asleep that night. In the morning, we discussed it and agreed that since now Mute had discovered our relationship anyway, there was no point in things remaining a secret. He promised to announce me publicly as his fiancée today. In fact, that announcement is what I'm waiting on right now. I always thought that I would be nervous when this moment happened. But instead, I don't feel anything. It seems like things will finally come to a head, and society will be saved. It feels as if the end is finally in sight, and yet only one single thought comes across my mind. I wish I was spending this moment by your side. With love and apologies, Big Sister. Jesus. I'm just staring at her picture and just... It's so freaking sad. <sighs> okay, okay. Let's look at the next one. Striking back at society's betrayal. Dear little sister, me soon. It seems like things are finally coming to a head now. Security officers came by my home today. Thankfully, I've been staying in one of Ryu's apartments ever since he announced our betrothal. Because he received word from someone loyal to him that Mute was planning on making a move against us. Wait a minute. Received word from someone loyal to him that Mute was planning on making a move against us. How? Who? Who is the informant? Who did she tell? Hmm. Furthermore, that someone only found out about us through the counselor, um, that someone only found out about it through the former counselor O Chung Wu, which is to say my own father, knew of it and said nothing. My father, who I took on the position of university president for, thanklessly, suffered so much for the sake of the family, I can't believe this betrayal. My own father. I've never been more sure of her society's absolute debasement until now. To imagine a father hanging out his own daughter to dry? Have the bonds of family truly gotten this weak? Something big is going to happen soon, according to the information Ryu has been receiving. 
Mute has always been the worst kind of person, a self-righteous bitch, but as much as she stands in defense of conservatism, of our debased society, I never thought she could be so bold as to actually make a move against the ruler of the ship. We have to make a stand here. It looks like this is the point where subtle manipulation will no longer suffice. We must make a stand in the face of so much betrayal. It just hurts so much that it's come to this. When all we've ever had is the ship's best interest at heart. I'm so tired of it all. I'm so tired of being under unappreciated. I just don't understand how they can't see that the ship we live in has gotten to be so rotten. To think of the status quo that lets you die. That entrusted you to someone like me instead of a real father. Instead of a strong husband who could take care of you. How could anyone defend such a cruel society? How could anyone find that just? She thinks that's a cruel society? Look at what she made! <sighs> Things have gotten so much better in the past six years. People are marrying more. Women are more and more seeking the right priorities. Men are learning virtues and filiality in school. Yet, despite all the slow progress, people still stand against us. Well, I guess we know how that went. Yep. They clearly will not see reason. Mute? Her Hyo family of mindless security officers, even my own father. As much as it hurts me to write them all off as lost causes. What other option is there? Tonight, my first night living under the protection of my fiancé. I'm going to do the only thing I can do when he returns home. I will serve him tea and softly tell him what we have to make a stand against, uh, that we have to make a stand against the people who destroy all we've worked for. The only pragmatic solution is that heads will have to roll. If even a member of the council is enacting a threat of violence, subtly, subtlety can't work anymore. We need a new society, a new dynasty, or dynasty, a dynasty, yeah, where we make a firm stand for what's right. That's what I'll tell him. Softly, of course. When it comes down to it, I guess I'm finally going to see through what we started optimistically all those years ago. But I'm not excited, nor nervous, nor glad, nor relieved. I'm just so tired of it all. Tired of all the wrongs. I don't feel any anticipation for it anymore. All I feel now is that I want to make things right. I want to make a society that would have protected you. I want to make a society that would have given you what you deserved. I want to make a society that would have given you something better than me. I can't tell you how much I wish you were here. I hope you'd be proud of me. And it hurts so very much that I'll never hear you say it. With love and sorrow, Big Sister Yana. I never would have thought she was thinking of her little sister the whole time. Yeah, she... I just... <laughs> I don't even know what to make of this. It's just... She's... Y Yana is fucking disgusting, but... And it hurts so very much that I'll never hear you say it. Okay, well that ended on a happy note. I think that's it for this batch. Well, we've come far from the cake baking into just complete tragedy. Uh, there's no more on red, right? No. Okay. Okay, let's grab another block. 19%. I think we can... Actually, I think we might be able to grab more than one more. Alright. Alright, let's go in for more. Alright, um, how many... How many are here? One... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that means I can get everything. Because I think I can grab six and then three more when I'm on, what is it, like 7% power? Alright, let's finish up M5. Worthless as a wife. Hmm. Any more M5? 
Nope. Alright. Uh, let's start dipping into M6. <laughs> the President's Arrest. Election Night. Oh, this one's from Mute. Well, that's Election Night 2. Where's Election Night 1? Maybe I've already read it, or maybe it's not here. I don't know. Um, daily report. Oh, that's another one from Mute. Let's grab that. New council. All right. Commit to extraction. Yeah, I believe I should be able to get everything. I should be able to get three more, I think. I just keep thinking of her little sister. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. What do we have? 44, 44, 44, 44, 45. These two are older. Alright, so let's go for this one. The new council, Hyo So Young. Gee, she's scary. Chief Security Officer, yep. Mute's closest lieutenant. Idiots. We've taken a completely functional political institution and replaced it with a collection of absolute idiots. Counselor Mute shouted at me the moment she appeared on screen. <laughs> Good evening, Counselor, I said. Tough day at work. Don't you start with me, she rolled her eyes, wagging her finger at me. I've dealt with enough bullshit today, okay? I'm sick of it. Sorry. Are you the only counselor who's remained after the whole meritocracy thing? <laughs> me and Chief Counselor Ryu. Somehow, that dimwit was the only other member of the council who managed to pass his exams, she said, throwing up her hands. What the hell? Huh. That's all because of meritocracy? I gave her a look. Not even the Counselor of Education was able to retain retain his position? Surely one would think he would have no problem as he controls the exam's content, I said, perplexed. I did not like what I was hearing. This was a radical shakeup of the political climate, and that is never a good thing. Like, I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, education stayed in the O family, at least. A couple have actually gone to different families altogether, she said. Whoa, I said in surprise. Yeah. Which is actually pretty big, given the whole nobility status is tied to council position thing, meaning that, like, the Kim family just straight up, straight up don't count as nobles anymore, she said. Ah. So that's what happened with that. I found myself um, uh, feeling immensely grateful that my family status was perpetually tied to mute, who has the advantage of being perfect and therefore not very likely to fail any exams anytime soon. Regardless of how utterly repugnant the notion of nobility having to prove their status is, I said as much to her. Yeah, yeah, she said, giving me a look. Anyway, I want dossiers on all the new counselors made. First line for each, utter idiots. But, like, I want to know who these people are. Especially the ones from new families. I don't know anything about them, and I want that changed, okay? Wait a minute, is that what... Is that what Yanaz... Little Sister Burned, the list of counselors that was actually on paper. But, the, I mean... But if it's on paper, then how would Mute read it? It would have to be digitized. I, nah, I don't know. Yes, ma'am, I said. I thought about it for a, for a bit, and then suggested. We should keep a close eye on any family that has lost their nobility status, as they may cause trouble. Harsh, but I guess with how hostile how hostile the council was, I understand. Yep. Good call, she said. Hey, let me bounce a crazy theory off off you. Do you think this could have been a power play by Ryu? I considered it. It seemed unlikely to me, given all that she had said about the man. He was the one she handpicked for the position of chief chief counselor herself, and her judgment is impeccable. There's no way that could be that it could be a power play, because the whole reason why she, she suggested him for the position was because he wasn't the sort to make one. Yep, she was wrong, unfortunately. 
You're probably right, she said. Still, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, the whole insufferable meritocracy idea came from President Park, but Ryu's the one who formally proposed it in council on his behalf. And now that's in it's in place, he's the only one who's still got a position. Makes you wonder. I still don't believe it to be in character, I said. Okay, well, I said it was a crazy theory, she shrugged. Anyway, what have you got to report to me today? We spoke no more of the new council that day. Alright, what's the next one? 43, 43, alright, without him. Kyo, so young. Oh no, oh great, more tragedy, no. Oh, yesterday I lost my husband. Today I have to deal with the aftermath. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> he seemed to have a close relationship with the house's maids. Yep, he did. I'm writing this as a way of resting in lieu of sleeping. I don't have time for that luxury. There's a few leads we're following up on, but they don't seem promising. In the morning after I discovered he was gone, I had no choice but to contact his parents to let them know. His father was understanding and sympathetic. His mother didn't say a word, as per usual. I promised them I would get to the bottom of it, and got back to work. But mere, but mere hours later, Counselor Mute and I were interrupted by his uncle, the former Counselor of Engineering, bursting into my office. No photo. How could you let this happen? He demanded, immediately starting a confrontation. Watch your tone, Mute snapped before I could. Excuse me, I asked. What happened that he just disappeared, he said, audaciously. I knew letting him marry someone like you was a mistake. What did you do to scare him off? Scare him off, I stammered, taken aback by the insanity of his question. I said, watch your tone, young man, mute snapped at my elderly uncle-in-law. I think he really deserves all that harshness from mute. Jeez, yeah, me too. I lost my husband. Don't you dare come in here and give me that, I told him. Well, you better be dedicating all your resources to finding him, he said to me. At that point, I, absol I absolutely lost it at the combination of audacity and stupidity. Find him. Find him? I shouted, standing up. Do you think he just up and wandered off? Do you think he's just off hiding on some other deck? Took a waff walk off into space? This is a spaceship. It's a 100-deck sealed environment. I know exactly where every single living man, woman, and child on the ship is at this exact moment. Aren't you supposed to be an engineer? Don't you know how biometric scanners work? There are cameras on every single corridor on the ship, and I have the security clearance to do everything short of watching you slip in the shower. Maybe a half-senile washed-up failure of a former counselor could lose the person they married, but I'm the chief security officer. I had to take a breath at that point, then I wiped the tears from my eyes, slammed my hand against my desk, and continued. If someone is missing to me, that means they're dead. The man I love and vowed to protect with my life has been killed, almost certainly deliberately, I said. There was a silence. And you have the nerve to walk into my office and give me this shit while I'm mourning a far, far better man than you ever were. It took him aback, but didn't make me feel better. Even thinking about it now makes me equal parts angry and sad. After a long pause, he finally found something just as inappropriate to say as before. Then maybe you should have protected him. Jesus, what a fucking douchebag. Mr. Kim, Mute snapped. You are completely out of line. You too, he said. And do you really think anyone would try to hurt him for any reason other than to get his oh-so-important wife? You made him a target. Then I couldn't even protect him. <laughs> that son of a bitch. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Fucking blaming the wife after her husband just died? How disgusting can you get? Get out of my office, I told him, with as much venom as I could muster. You might as well have killed him yourself. He never meant that much to you anyway. Was it worth it? He asked. That was the point where I snapped. I called out to the security officer, stationed at the door. 
Give me your sidearm and wait outside, I told him. He did, bowed, and left the office looking alarmed. <laughs> Where is this going? Get out of my office now, I shouted, pointing the gun at him. What are you? He stammered in shock before I cut him off. Get out right now or I swear I will strike you down where you stand, I screamed at him tearfully. Now. Crazy woman, he said, stumbling out and quickly disappearing. Then the officer reappeared with a maid beside him. Ma'am, she has a message from the chief counselor. I didn't say anything, uh, she said, looking at the gun with concern. Chief Counselor Ryu wants to express his sincerest condolences to the widow of Ki- Get the fuck out, I screamed at her, too. She ran away in alarm, and the security officer shrunk away. The door closed after them. I threw the gun angrily in response. Then I slumped down into my chair, exhausted. I sighed and turned to my superior. A moment of silence passed. I think I would have done it, I said, more thinking out loud than anything. You wouldn't have actually let me shoot him, right? She smiled at me. <laughs> Please, Xiao Yang, I shut down every weapon in the office the moment he walked in, she said, giving me a sympathetic look. I couldn't help but laugh. That's really strong of her, though. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That would have been pretty bad, wouldn't it? I took my handkerchief and wiped more tears from my eyes without thinking. A blackened smear followed it. Oh no, don't lie to me. How bad is my makeup right now? Uh, she said, well, it's kind of like... I guess, let me put it this way. Have you ever seen a plasma relay explode? Oh hell, I said, sinking further into my chair. I'm not taking this well. Wow, I am really not taking this well. Well, you know, every single couple I've known, I've watched one of them lose the person who was most important to them, in the end. He's not the most important, I admitted, quietly. Wait, her husband wasn't the most important? Then who? Oh, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah, she she loves Mute. They're very close. Oh, she responded after a moment, seemingly getting what I meant. She didn't acknowledge it, past adding, okay. You know what sort of a, you know what sort of relationship we have, had I suppose. We never wanted to be singularly devoted to each other. But regardless. Still, he was my husband, I said, my eyes watering a little, hoping I wasn't sounding terrible. I love him, admire him, respect him. We're even, we were even talking about having another child together. I gotcha, she said. I don't really get what she's saying about the relationship, but... From nowhere in particular, a cigarette appeared in her hand, <laughs> and she gracefully lit it in one gesture. Really, what I was trying to say was... There's no such thing as taking it well. Since when do you lie to comfort people? I asked her. Man, I'm not lying. It's the honest truth, she said. You're mute, though. You're perfect. You wouldn't... You wouldn't fall apart like this, I said. Perfect? Her? As if. Yeah, she was not perfect. Oh, yeah, right. Miss How... Or Miss Chio, I, I, I'm probably mispronouncing it and pronouncing it differently each time, but whatever. Miss Hyo, I've loved more people than you've ever known in your entire life, she told me. Like, when I lost my first love, he was my programmer on Earth, a ridiculous otaku, a sweetheart, and a smoker. He's the one who got me into this habit, she said, waving her cigarette. It took me a hundred years to get over him. I mourned him for longer than he was ever even alive, okay? You know how I finally did it? I had to delete my memories of our happiest moments together, so I'd stop dwelling on them. Oh, Jesus, that's sad. That's tragic, though. Yeah, oh my god. Wow. I lose everyone, Xiao Young, okay? I've loved so many people, and in the end, all of them turn to ash. She said sadly, tapping on the end of her cigarette, causing little gray flecks to flutter downwards, then disappear. What I'm saying is... No, I don't take it well either. Okay? I just stopped letting myself fall in love, is all. That's so sad, but... With how long she's been alive... I... I understand. How sad, I said, trailing off. Don't pity me. My point is, not being able to deal with it is normal. 
I suppose. Thanks, I said. So what about at home, she asked. It's been difficult. The maids are all absolutely inconsolable. They're honestly taking it worse than I am. I mean, they loved him, I said reluctantly. In more than one sense. <laughs> Wait, is she saying, even at that time, men did things like that with... Yep. Don't go there. They're a bunch of heartbroken young women, and I feel bad for them. Especially Miss Lim. Oh yeah, her. Although I do wish they'd tone it down a little. So I heard them crying about him, and came to me asking where her daddy was. Aww. Oh jeez, what a bunch of stupid girls. You'd think they'd be more careful around your daughter, she said harshly. What did you tell her? I sighed. The truth. I said, I told her that her father had been killed. And that mommy was very upset, and it's fine for her to be too. And that I was going to find out who did that and punish them. I mean, what else could I possibly say to her? I don't know, should I have lied to her? Jeez, no. Kids are smart. I mean, your maids are a bunch of idiots, but still. She's a smart kid. She'd know something was up, she said. It's just... There's a whole house full of people close to him that's crying over him. His own family that hates me, and my siblings that are probably too scared to go near me right now. But I'm sure they're upset too, and it's... I don't even know, I said, starting to lose control of my emotions again. It's just so much... I wish... I wish... It's okay. You want him back. I get it. That's normal, she told me. I don't want him back. That's stupid. He's dead. Nothing's going to change that, I said, trembling. I want to find out whoever did this, and I want to fucking kill them. You really think that'll make you feel better? She asked, patronizingly. No, I said. Of course not. But it's what he deserves. She gave me a long look. Then flicked away her cigarette far off screen. Okay, Lieutenant. Good enough for me. But please, I want you to go home, wash up your face, and try to get a couple hours of rest. She said. Adding before I had a chance to argue, that's an order. I want my best officer to be up to speed and not trembling in her chair. Got it? Yeah, got it, I said softly. I couldn't argue. I really was trembling in my chair. <clears throat> then after that, I want you to get back here and get to work on finding out what barbaric idiot decided to commit the treason of declaring war on my family. I want them found. I want them caught and I want every s and I want them and every single thing they stand for destroyed. I want them hurt so badly for generations to come, people wince in fear at the thought of hurting anyone under my protection," she said, clenching her wrinkled fist tightly. Does that meet your approval, Miss Xiao? I was moved to tears. I had to wipe my eyes again and take, and take a deep breath. Yes, ma'am, I said, still trembling, but intensely grateful. Wow, that's kind of cool, Mute, actually. That is. That is. Good job, Mute. She said she's does just doesn't fall in love anymore, but I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Tries to hide it, tries to not think about it, tries to ignore it. Yeah. But she obviously has a deep connection with Hyo So Young. Yeah. Okay, good. Now go, get some rest, she ordered. You're dismissed. So here I am, getting the closest thing to rest that I can. And now, it's time to get to work. Alright. Uh, what's next? 45, 44, 44, 44. Um, well, let's go for this. Wow, they actually predicted that one completely right. Wait, predicted what? From my internal logs, 9.01pm in Hyo So Young's office. Well, polls are now closed, I suppose, she said. Who even cares, I sighed. We both know there might as well only be one candidate in the running. Five years of President and Chief Counselor, Ryu. Like, maybe he'll invent some new titles for himself now that he has all the power on the ship. Grand Emperor Ryu. I lit a cigarette. Wishing I could have gotten the emotional release out of it that the man I was imitating had gotten. 
Then I reflected on it and remembered that he didn't get anything out of it either. It was just an addiction. What's this going to mean? She asked. I knew that she already knew exactly what the implications were. It means he's pretty much defanged the security veto, since you'll have the presidential override and all, I said. I can't believe this actually happened. My worry was always with five more years of President Park, like I never thought it would be this. Has anything like this ever happened before? She asked. Yeah, and uh, 2,551, I said. Recollecting the comparison that's been on my mind the most as of late? There was a revolution. It only lasted like five years. By peasants who believed in total democracy. They managed to steal the root password and held the ship hostage until we surrendered. We had no choice. <laughs> so wait a minute, this is... So this sort of thing is happening in cycles again and again. Hmm. Wow. It's strange to think of just how far the ship's history goes back. Wow. Uh, but it didn't last, right? You were able to put things right in the end, weren't you? She asked. Yeah, I trailed off. Yeah. But it was absolutely catastrophic. Star got irreparably damaged in the process. He was the ship's navigation AI. And those revolutionary fuckers killed him. We got the people under control in the end, but the damage was already done. Like, if something that bad happens again, well, it can't, okay? It can't. You know, I always wondered what happened to Navigation AI. I just realized the Navigation AI is called Star. How appropriate. <laughs> what do we do now, then? She asked. I could see fear and uncertainty in her eyes, and like, I really wanted to say something to reassure her. I wanted to have a good answer. I don't know, Xiao Young, I said. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. Break open the vintage. 3,899 you got from that uh, kid last election, I guess. I think drinking vicariously through you is the best I can manage this evening. Oh, I forgot all about that. I've been saving it for... well, it hardly matters anymore. I suppose I might as well, she said, getting up to find the bottle. I already knew what she'd been saving it for, anyway. Her 20th anniversary. It would have been this year. It's not as if I think we'll have anything worth celebrating in the future. She popped the cork and poured herself a glass. I imitated her gesture, rendering a glass of my own into my hand. What should we toast? She asked. I don't know, I said. I'm being too fucking old to handle this shit. Even they swore like that. Was that a thing women in the past did too? She, ra she raised her glass to my screen. Here's to being too... F oh, wait, I've already... Oh, no, no, I, I haven't already read that. They're just saying it again. Here's to being too fucking old to handle this shit, she said. The words ding didn't ring right coming from her, aside from when she was angry. Cursing never suited her. Cheers, I said. She took a long sip. She paused, reflecting on it. I thought it'd be better, she finally said. She took another sip, then she laughed. It's awful. This is actually the worst wine I have tasted in my life. Good thing I didn't share it with my husband, she said, laughing un uncomfortably again, going to pour her usual whiskey instead. This is the worst. It's like a drinking vinegar. You know, counselor, this may well actually be vinegar. I guess I should have anticipated that from a 150-year-old bottle of wine. As if something that old could be anything but worthless. I rolled my eyes. <laughs> if only I could be like... 150 and young again, I said. I'm better at dealing with those feelings, but I'm not that much better. Maybe I'd be less scared if I had 1,600 years of experience, she said. I don't know, so young. I'm tired. I'm just so fucking tired. So young, I said to her, taking a drag. <clears throat> Everything is changing. All these young men in politics are causing so much damage, and like, I'm just so tired. She moved her chair up, close to my screen. How can you be tired? Your computer, it's not as though you have a body that can age, she asked sympathetically. Well, you know, I'm made up of all sorts of little processes that get increasingly bloated over time. 
Every time I get a new piece of input, I have to process it and cross-reference it against the data from all those years of experience in order to contextualize it. I told her. I'm not designed for this. I was only d d supposed to be around for a thousand at most. Okay? It just gets so tiring. You know, I'm thinking the stuff I got about... Um, AI psychology probably applies more to mute than Hyone. Yeah. Hmm. I'm so sorry, she said to me, looking like she had taken it harshly. I feel as though I miss the last election night. We spent all night scrambling to put down protests. Things felt so simple and under control then. Look, Xiao Young, we'll get through this. One fraudulent election isn't enough to render us powerless. I promise, okay? I promise you, I said. I'm just scared, ma'am, she said, putting her hand against the screen. I'm not allowed to be scared. I'm expected to be strong, commanding, uh, commanding. I should be able to stare down any man. I should be able to keep on top of everything that happens on the ship. I should be able to protect my family. I should be able to raise my daughter. There's too much on me, and I've failed too many times. I'm scared. I'm not allowed to be scared, but... I'm scared. Yeah, I guess it really is hard to be strong. Yeah. I know. It's okay. Look at me, I said, drawing my own hand, touching hers, and trying my best to come up with uh, bra bravado. It was the best I could do to comfort her. I'm fucking mute AI in charge of the Magungwa security operations. I've been keeping the Magungwa safe since 2390, and I will do whatever it takes to keep it that way if it kills me. Look at me. Look me in the eyes. It's my responsibility to keep things under control, Lieutenant. All you have to do is follow orders and believe me when I say things are going to be okay. They're going to be tough, but they're going to be okay. It's not your job to worry about that. Let me be strong. Let me be in control. I believe in you. Do you trust me, Lieutenant? Can you follow that order? I... Somehow this atmosphere feels really intimate. Yeah. Yeah, this is... I... She stared at me, finishing her shot of whiskey in, in one. I'd given the speech to her before, when she was still afraid to be so familiar to me, and had much younger eyes, and I'd given that speech to at least a dozen men and women in the past... I'm no longer able to tell if it's bullshit or not. Yes, ma'am, she said quietly. Thank you. I guess sometimes Mew could be a nice person, huh? Yeah. Good, I said. Then believe me. We'll get through this okay. Just watch me. At that point, I checked the network for notifications. As I suspected, the election results had come in. For all that they mattered. Now come on, get up, I said to her in my best approximation of a matronly voice. The election results are in. Five years of Chief Counselor and President Ryu. Do we have a dossier yet on the biggest threat to ship security? You mean Ryu? No, we don't. She said, her voice becoming less shaky. Well, let's get it together, Lieutenant, I ordered her. Yes, ma'am, she said, confident again. Alright, what's next? Three more. Well, this one is next. Daily report for December 11th. I wonder if that was the same house I was in or... Wait, what do you mean? <coughs> on Counselor Mew's orders, I attended Chief Counselor and now President Ryu's victory party on her behalf. I confess that I managed to avoid most that I have managed to avoid most parties outside of my family for a very long time by choice. But this was an even more deeply alienating experience than I'd expected in light of that. The entire council, excluding the Counselor of, Counselor of Security, of course, was in attendance, as well as various mem men from the Ryu family who were apparently involved in his campaign. And several of the electoral monitors, the one I stared down on... Wait, the one I stared down on earlier this week included... We didn't talk. I wore my dress uniform there, as any sane person would, and I, and I ended up being the only person wearing pants. Literally everyone else was wearing some manner of traditional attire or another. I asked around about this, and apparently it's been the fashion at all formal events for the past year now. 
I had no idea, having spent the time being preoccupied with matters vastly more important than nobles and their absurd, fabulous parties. This isn't about fashion, though, and I don't really know if this is relevant. But there's one thing that I found to be profoundly off-putting. Somehow this sounds fami awfully familiar. Uh-oh. Excluding maids and entertainers, I was the only woman president, uh, present in attendance. After a certain point in the evening, when the wine had flown freely for a while, the new president, Ryu, trotted out. Of all people, my long-estranged niece, Hyo A. Chong. Her. Long-estranged niece. While she sang dramatic love songs in uncomfortably intimate quarters with several counselors, I discreetly interrogated one of the maids. Evidently, A. Chong had been unable to support herself and her younger sister based... Wait, younger sister. Who is her younger sister? I don't remember her mentioning anything about her younger sister. Hmm. Um. Based off theater income anymore, and was now living under Ryu's roof, providing entertainment for his visitors. I am utterly certain that A. Chong is is an only child. But never mind that for now. Wait, if she doesn't have a little sister, then who does she mean? Yeah, what, what is she talking about? She's an only child, but never mind that for now. What? Huh. Neither me nor her father have spoken to her at all in well over a decade, but I suppose I assumed she continued to have a successful career. I don't understand what happened. This probably isn't relevant to anything political, but since she's part of our family, I thought you should know. Past that, I learned very little of any valuable of very little of any value from attending. I'm afraid, none of the counselors present were willing to share more than the same blandly stilted pleasantries you would have gotten from them. I can only really report back a couple of things of value. Firstly, as I suspected, the electoral monitor responsible for arresting President Park is on very close speaking terms with Ryu. I don't know if that's useful, but it's confirmation at least. The second and most important thing is not good. I overheard a very drunk counselor of justice. Who is that? Hmm. He seems uh, rather obnoxious. Who didn't realize I was standing nearby. Saying, and I quote, We've tried to get it out of him, but it looks like the only person who knows the password is that bitch. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make out anything more from him, thanks to some very loud singing from Ai Chong drowning them out. We tried to get it out of him. But it looks like the only person who knows the password is that bitch. Well, that bitch they're talking about has to be mute. But we tried to get it out of him. Who's him? Who, who are they talking about? Who did they try to get it out of? Hmm. Because I know they had an informant. Beyond that, I was unable to learn anything else. There's nothing of tremendous use in there, I'm afraid. And that is my report for today. I think I like the report with the potted plant thing better. This is awfully, well, 